So in one guys, in this video we are going to see how to find unknown voltages using nodal analysis method. Now the in nodal analysis method what we have to do is first thing we have to set up a known voltage. For that one we connect this bottom to the ground. In that way the bottom parts are going to be zero. Then what we have to do is we have to, for each node we assign variables like we assign like a V1, V2, V3 something like that. So let's see the nodes right here. We have one node right here, one node right here, one node and another node. So let's call this one V1, right? And let's call this one V2 and let's call this V3 and let's call this one V4. V1 is very easy because if you notice this 5 volt is connected with this one, right? So therefore V1 is going to be definitely 5 volt. We don't have anything else. So this is going to be V1 is equal to 5 volt and that's easy. And the next thing is we have here we have a super node. So when we have super node what we do is we take that super node as common like we take the whole thing as common and then we use the curve of slope, curve of current law to find to create an equation. So catch of current law, what we are going to do is whatever the current must exit or the addition of all the current is equal to zero. Since we don't have any current and exiting or entering the super node, we are going to use the addition of all the currents is going to be equal to zero. So let's call this one I1. So whenever we have current is not provided, we always assume it's leaving the leaving the node since we have super node so we assume this leaving the super node so we are going to assume this one is leaving so let's call this one i2 and let's call this one i3 and let's call this one i4 so according to catch of flow addition of all these should be equal to zero i1 plus i2 plus i3 plus i4 is equal to zero but before this is equal to zero so we have that this equation and also we can find out one thing from this one and here we have plus and here we have minus right so plus means this is higher potential right here so we have to if you subtract higher potential from I mean lower potential from higher potential lower potential is V2 if you subtract this one that's going to be the voltage different like this voltage that's going to be equal to this voltage right higher potential minus lower potential equal to this voltage so we can create this equation right here so we have one equation and we created another equation using curve of current law now let's write this one in terms of volts so i1 let's look at the i1 so this is v2 minus v1 over 5 right so v2 minus v1 over 5 and we know that v1 is already 5 so we can directly write uh, directly write this is v2 minus 5 over 5 kilo ohm and then the next one is going to be we have i2 and that's going from v2 so v2 minus this is when it connected to the ground that's zero voltage so v2 minus zero over 4 is equal to the current i2 right so v2 over 4 and then we have this one right here so I4 you can write V3 minus V4 over 2 but that creates two unknown variables because we don't know what is the voltage right here. So what we can do is here we can combine these two together this 2 and 1 because since this is in series we can combine these two together and that's going to be 3 kilo ohm right. So this is going to be 3 kilo ohm right here and this is connected with the ground so this is going to be equal to 0. So we can directly say V3 minus 0 over 3 kilo ohm is equal to this current I4 and then we have found out I2 and uh, we have we have created equation for I1 I2 I4 but we didn't create for I3 I3 is V3 minus 0 over 3 right so this is v3 over 3 this is also v3 over 3 so we can combine these two together now let's simplify all of them and see what this whole thing should be equal to 0 and if we simplify this one 
So here we have to take a common denominator. But before I take the common denominator, I can add these two together. That's going to give us v2 minus 5 over 5 plus v2 over 4. This is kilo. And uh, plus instead of v3 over 3, v3 over 3, we can write 2 v3 over 3, right? Equal to 0. And here we can take common denominator that's going to be 5 times 4, 20. 20 times 3 is 60, right? So we can take 60 as our common denominator, or we can take 30, 30 or 60. It doesn't matter because the ratio is not going to change. 60, if I take 60, this is going to be 6v2, actually, not 12v2, 12 times v2 minus 12 times 5, that's going to be 60. And then here we are going to have 15 v2. And here we are going to have 20 times 2, that's going to be 40 v3, right? 40 v3 is equal to 0. And if I move this 60 to the other side, that's going to become 0. So we are going to have this one right here. And if we add them together, we have 12 v2, 15 v2, that's going to be 27 v2. So 27 v2 plus 40 v3 is equal to 0. 0 and also we have 60 right here. So minus 60 is equal to 0. Therefore 27 v2 plus 40 v3 should be equal to 60. So now we have created this equation. Let's call this one equation 2. This one equation 1, right? Now we can create our matrix and solve this one. Right, so we have this one and let's go ahead and create the matrix. So in the first column we are going to put, since we have two variables, V2 in the first column, let's put one minus one because my, minus V2, right? So that's mean minus one is the coefficient. So minus one, this is V2 column, this is V3 column, minus one and for the first one V3 is one and for the second one, we have 27v2 and then we have 40v3 right so we are trying to find v2 and v3 another side of the equation we are going to put this one equal to 10 and the second one is equal to 60 so here we have to use Cramer's rule and if you use Cramer's rules and find the values you should get v2 is equal to negative 340 over 67 and v3 is going to be equal to 330 over 67 so this is what we are going to get so now we found out v1 we found out already v2 we found out v3 we found out right here so what if we want to find v4 to find v4 what we can do is now let's uh, let's continue this one right here Okay, so again, addition of all this current should be equal to zero, right? So here we have two kilo ohm, and uh, since we don't have the current provided, we just this is the direction assumed for this one. Now, when we take the new node, we should we should forget about the previous one, and always assume it's leaving. So if this is leaving this one, that's going to be V4 minus V3 over 2 right plus and v4 minus 0 over 1 so we can put v4 over 1 should be equal to 0 therefore if we take 2 as our common denominator this is gonna be v4 minus v3 plus 2 v4 is equal to 0 therefore finally we get let's continue I write this one right here I hope you because I'm writing with a different color you can identify so v4 we here we have v4 and this is 2 v4 so 3 v4 3 v4 minus v3 over 2 is equal to 0 right if I take the 2 to the other side that's going to be 0 so we know that 3 v4 is going to be equal to v3 therefore v4 is going to be equal to 
v3 divided by 3. So we have to divide this value, whatever the value we are getting right here, by 3. And if you calculate that one, you will get 1.6479 voltage. So that's going to be the voltage for V4. And that's how we do this kind of problems. I hope you guys find this video helpful. See you next time.